Uh, so we are basically today we will focus on emails, letters and memos, right? So if you can hear me clearly, I want all of you to do two things for me. First of all, um, please check your name as it appears in the session today. If you if your name appears as a number, can you please add at least your first name um, so that I can call a few people out. So please do add your name, first of all. And uh, the second thing I want you to do is to grab uh, your notebooks and pens uh, because we are going to do a lot of activities in the session, right? So if you can hear me, right? So um, very quickly, and I will give you some time and then we can, uh, if, you, if you have not brought your notebook and uh, pen those necessary items, uh, please yeah, we can see only few people go and grab them. Uh, name, uh, the exactly. And the other thing, everyone, I want to also make a request at the beginning uh, is uh, for you to actually give me 100% exactly of your attention, right? Because usually I've done a lot of these sessions and what happens is every year we talk about emails, memos, letters, and still there are people who don't know how to do a professional job, right? So uh, it's not because this is difficult or you don't know. It's because maybe the attention is not about you. Please uh, try and focus fully. Just give me these two hours. Please stop all the multitasking, right? And if you are looking at your mobile phones and, you know, chatting with other people, uh, I don't know, checking your emails um, or listening to music or something like that, I just want you to stop and just pay uh, attention to me uh, just for these two hours. I, I, I assure you that it's going to be kind of a fun session. Uh, and you'll be doing a lot of activities. So your time will be really worth it, right? So I hope all of you are now ready with pens and papers and you're ready to take notes. And also you have, I still see uh, numbers instead of names. So if you know how to change your name or the registered name for the session can you please go and add your name at least the first uh, name so that i can call you out okay still i can see one two five kind hearts so we can't call people with those names right uh, um, 144 85 like printers like to call you by your first name Okay, so until you do that, let me quickly give you a roundup of what we will be covering today. So as you can see, we will talk about uh, emails, letters, memos, and we will look at brief short case studies. And also uh, very important is that, um, yes, I think Hashan is asking whether the recording will be available um that is something that i think august can answer yes miss the record uh, we are recording okay. the session we will be able to share the recording in the future okay because augusta i think hashan is saying there's no power obviously <laughs> right yeah um, and, okay, we can understand uh, i think hashan also yeah hashan also reminded me that i i am also supposed to get a power cut around seven i think so if i black out just wait i will use my other connection and join the session right so don't panic everyone halfway through if something happens uh, just wait um okay so uh, some of you don't know how to rename yourselves i think there's a more button next to your number or name that appears and if i can remember correctly if you put if you click on the more button uh, there's something called name your change your name or something like that just check it out um, it's good if you if you can change it but if you don't know then it's fine okay 
uh, yeah, it's it's a difficult thing. I think you can change very easily. Right, so we are going to talk about some of the basics, but as I told all of you, um, since all of you are working and you all are professionals, I'm trying to give you a little bit more than uh, what is needed uh, for your exams, right? So there, there, there's going to be two things happening, uh, very important things happening in today's session. Uh, on one hand, I want you to learn um, what are the requirements in your final exams for your exams right and on the other hand i would like you to take notes as i told you i, I asked you to bring your notebooks uh, that is for your professional progress right in office you see a lot of people uh, they struggle uh, with writing letters memos and emails which is unfortunate i think because we are living in a world where we are talking about very advanced technologies like artificial intelligence data analytics adaptive technologies right uh, but here uh, there are people who don't know how to write a simple email so i don't want that happening so please try to focus on both these objectives on one hand try to learn what is required in your exams right what your examiners are looking for but also on the other hand on one hand what will really help to manage your um, correspondence or communication in the workplace as well so this is not just a session which is looking at uh, the just emails right just memos no it's i'm trying to give you something is right uh, but a little beyond uh, so that right so i'm not going to talk too much about them now i want all of you to do something for me right let's start with a little fun thing words right i want you to very quickly i'm giving you only one minute for this right it's a fun stuff fun fun activity so you have to do it very quickly so i'm going to show you five terms that are connected to business correspondence and i want you to within one minute i want you to text me or use the chat and send me an answer to at least one of these terms that you know right so my question to you is what are the meanings of these words that are connected to business co correspondence right so uh are you i hope all of you are ready because i'm giving exactly one minute so you have to hurry and you have to use your chat and send me an answer let's see how many of you can at least respond to one of these terms and concepts right what do these mean my question is what do these mean you have one minute and your time starts now Okay, everyone go to the chat and very quickly, I want you to tell me at least the meaning. Don't, don't Google, right? So that's prohibited. No Googling, no internet, just your brain. What do you know? That's it, right? What do you know about it? Very quickly tell me um, at least one of these. What do they mean? You have a few more.
use the chat. I hope everyone's chat is working. So I will extend the time to two minutes. No one is up now. I don't see an answer. So I'll give you a few more minutes. Right, very good. I see Mithursan has uh, sent an answer. Very good. Let's see how many others can respond. Very good. I see an answer from Anton. Hurry up, everyone. Come on. Right? At least one. I'm not asking for all five. At least try to give me an answer to one of these terms. Any more answer, right? So that's why I said, like, all of you have to be very active. And you have to give me answers and you have to do activities in today's session, right? Okay, your time is up. Your time is up now. But only three answers have come so far. What about the others? There are, I think, 105 except for the three of us. So it will be 102 parties. I want you to respond. At least one. Okay, Satin has also sent an answer. Others, please hurry up. What do these terms mean? At least for one, you should send me an answer. After all, you're participating in the session. You must do something, no? You can't just sit and do other stuff and expect to improve email writing skills, right? So you need to be hands-on if you really want to get good marks in your exam paper. And if you really want to improve your career, you need to be hands-on, right? Okay, good. Now I'm seeing some more answers. Very good. Keep on sending everyone. I'll give you more time. Everyone has a responsibility to reply. Don't wait and imagine that the others will respond and it's not your job because that's the problem with these online sessions. Usually people participate and, you know, they do so many other multitasking. They are cutting vegetables or they are doing, e e responding to emails or checking the internet, watching news, right? Or okay so i don't want all of you to do any of these because it will be worth your time so i see more answers now keep them coming i want more answers please right because if if you don't participate equally right and if you are just a shadow, I call them shadows. There are a lot of shadows in Sri Lanka, right? When we do online uh, sessions, they, they willingly join, but they never take anything positive out of it and uh, improve their lives. They have participated in a lot of online sessions, but there's no improvement, right? So that's, I don't want that happening with my sessions. I want at least you to take some responsibility and uh, personal responsibility and reply to me. Because so if I do my 100% attention, and if you as a participant, if you are not giving me attention, that's impolite, that's rude behavior online. Okay, so there you go. That's another point that you can learn. If you are doing, if you're conducting your online session even in your online or office make sure that you respond to other people because it's considered uh, impolite your break you're breaking netiquette rules right okay right very good now a lot of people have responded i I'm, i still feel that there are people who can respond more right i'm looking at your answers and i see some 
good answers and I also see some answers which may be wrong. But that's fine. At least you are responding. Okay. Right. So let's move on with our discussion. Uh, so I gave you five terms that are very, very important if you are using, if you are trying to um, use memos, letters and emails in your office work, right? It's not just your exam. Remember, CA has uh, given you the exam so that you really learn these skills, right? It's not limited to your exams. Every day you must be writing emails, memos, letters, and things like that, right? So everyone, please remember again, uh, one of the biggest problems, especially in our country is, uh, especially regarding online sessions, is that people don't participate and they don't take personal responsibility. So uh, please remember hereafter, if you participate in online session, you need to, you need to do things, right? You can't just sit there and be passive and not do anything because it's considered rude and impolite if you won't at least send an answer, right? I'm not asking you to switch on your cameras and use your microphones and respond to me. I'm giving you a very safe option. So your safe, safe option is to send me a chat answer. At least if you can't do that, I think that's, um, that's not good. Right, because communication is always two ways communication, right? Okay, so we um, talked about, we, we are looking at five different concepts that are equally important for emails, memos and letters, right? So these concepts, because there are a lot of people who don't know what these mean, uh, they end up creating business documents, which are sometimes very confusing uh, with poor quality, sometimes they miscommunicate messages, and sometimes it is very impolite. These, there are a lot of people who know what the communicate in terms mean. If you want, you can take notes on this because, as I said, there is a practical value for these ideas. So please learn it now. Don't put it in your book and say, okay, I will look at it later. I will li listen to the recording later, right? Don't think of later, think of now. Now it's a... ...pages and some take this into your mind because you are writing clarity okay right so uh, formatting is the arrangement of text and grades i did now a book i uh, don't think of later people know about formatting but they don't think about the white space right what do we mean by standard formatting arrangement of text in relation to know about formatting but imagine that one of your friends sent you a text message right and then the same friend sends you um, and uh, sends you a letter. Okay. Now, just by looking at these two documents or these two items, will you be if you and label them correctly? Right. If you are a normal person who has done a lot of work, then you would, right? you will very easily, very quickly, you will know, ah, okay, now I'm looking at a text message. And then you will also know, ah, now this is an, uh, this is an email or yeah. this is a letter, right? So how do we, how do we know as uh, human beings without even reading the documents, how do we know uh, in the first glance itself that you're looking at a different type of document? So you get to know that through the standard formatting, right? Letters have another type of standard formatting. So it is about learning these, these are called genres. So learning about writing genres or written genres is very important, right? 
So basically, what is standard formatting, everyone? The way you present the document, each genre or each item, how you present it to other people, right? So there are, if you say, I'm writing a letter, then the people expect you to use standard formatting, particular items. If you say, I'm writing a text message, then people also expect you, you to use a different type of um, uh, formatting, right? Okay, second one is visual cue. Visual cues are an element uh, we see and we interpret it because it's a symbol, right? Now, to give you a simple example, think about an email, okay? Can someone very quickly text me what is the visual cue that is used in emails to identify an attachment? What is the visual cue used in emails to identify an attachment? Can someone very quickly use the chat or the microphone and tell me? Ah, excellent. Not the hyperlink, right? Lakshani, very good. Danushka, Anton, um, uh, yeah, uh, Vijayalakshmi, right? So whenever we see the paper clip, we know it's the attachment, right? So that's called a visual cue. But imagine you are sending a text message, I mean, a usual SMS message. Do we see an attachment visual cue? Generally not, right? When we write, it's, we, we normally don't do that, right? But when we do emails, we usually um, do attachments. So there is a visual cue that is given. So in KSM, you need to know some of these basic factors, right? Very, very important is your awareness of each of these concepts. You need to know what is standard formatting, what is a visual cue, and finally, not finally, the third one is white space, which is something extremely neglected by some people, right? It's a very simple idea. However, void space is extremely important if you want to produce good professional writing, okay? What do we mean by void space? The margins, the space between paragraphs and blank space on the page. So when you write an email, when you write a memo or a letter, okay, you need to think about how much of percentage of white space you're leaving there. So if the percentage of white space is very low, right, that means you have unnecessarily um, packed um, that page with a lot of text, text, text. You don't like to see a lot of text. So it's a psychological factor, right? So next time, if you want, if you're writing sales letters or if you're writing promotional letters, this is something important for all of you, right? Um, how you organize the white space or the blank area in your, in your document really has a big impact on whether your clients or customers or managers will respond and read your document. Right, so this is something in Sri Lanka we don't think about, right? We think as much as possible, if we can write a lot, that is good. So that's a misconception, right? Let me tell you one of the comments from the examiners, right? In one of your exams, previous exams, the examiner has commented that um, some students have written the letter running up to two full pages. Right? So these are the mistakes that we often see in your exam uh, paper. So don't ignore what and the final I might give you the data in there. What it is a measurement of it is for your reader 
to read your document and find the information he or she wants. Again, um, there are a lot of people who are not aware of this, so they tend to keep on packing um, words, letters, numbers into their documents, right? So your readability index will go down if you don't think about the earlier uh, concepts, standard formatting, visual cue, white space, right? Uh, if you want to have a high readability index in your business correspondence, then you must using all these items in a balanced manner, right? So how do you improve your readability? Uh, very simple steps that you can follow. This is applicable to all three types of business correspondence, right? Emails, letters, memos. So I want all of you to remember now, right? What are the five concepts I've taught you? Um, and and uh, later on, if you are doing business report reports and if you're writing proposals, still the same five concepts are very, very important, right? So what are the five things? What are the earlier three things that we talked about? Number one, two of you. Number three, white space. Number four, uh, readability index. And the last one is parallel structures, right? So now you, you would have seen how I have, some of you know this, but just look at, how I have used parallel structures, right? Now see my titles are in green. So every slide I have used for main points, green uh, headlines, right? So every time you see my slides, if it is a green headline, and if you're paying attention, you will immediately know, ah, okay, this is an important topic. Uh, one of the main topics that she is talking about, right? So for secondary uh, headlines, I have used a yellowish sort of a headline. So every time you see a, a yellowish one, you will know that, ah, okay, this topic is a secondary item. You see, this is um, what I mean by parallel structures, right? So everyone needs to think about it, whether you are in your exams or whether you are in your office, if you are composing writing, these five concepts will really help you to reach um, the necessary uh, readers and make a good impression on them, right? Because don't forget how you write represent what qualities you have, what sort of standards that you have in mind, right? So for example, if you write an email and you have composed it in a very shabby manner, uh, unprofessional manner, in a hasty manner, right? The person who receives your email will immediately create an image about yourself, right? And gradually this image will build up and it will become something completely negative in their mind. So they might not really respond to you um, or respond Emails. Um, no, that point, Sachin. Sachin is asking a question. Sachin says white space doesn't mean the lack of information. Definitely not, right? White uh, white space refers to it is actually connected to your language skills. If you are a good uh, user of English, right? you have the ability to express the same amount of information in less words. So if two students write an answer uh, to the same thing, right? Okay, which student gives all the necessary information plus has more white space? And which student gives all the necessary information plus has less white space, right? Which one would be better? Which one will get more marks? The person who writes in the first place, right? The first person uh, who expresses the full idea, but also has a 
lot of white space right it does not that you have not included in important information right so that is your language skills you you need to have the ability to express the full meaning with less words and have more white space in your document okay now think about it in a practical manner imagine you get a email or a letter from somebody else and the letter is completely full of paragraphs paragraphs and paragraphs right what are you going to do what is your first reaction most probably you are going to throw it out or just you know you you are going to postpone looking at it right uh yes who is exactly you have more space but you cannot cut down on the content value so that's another thing that i will i thought i should not talk about it today but if when i do i think i have a report writing session with all of you so in that i will elaborate it uh, in little more detail right however today i want all of you to understand now see how how long we all of us have been writing emails memos letters but how many people know about these concepts right we keep on copying from somebody else or a template or something that you have previously produced and so re copying re pasting and sending but those are bound to create a negative image long term i'm not saying tomorrow when you get up uh, people will not speak to you right it doesn't happen but it takes a long time to develop into a bad thing right so bottom line everyone let me round up what i have just said we have discussed about five very important concepts if you are a professional and you are writing business using business correspondence uh, like emails letters and memos everyone every day needs to remind themselves of these five concepts right so what are the five concepts can all of you mentally recall without looking at your notebooks just try to mentally recall number 1 standard formatting number 2 visual cues number 3 white space number 4 readability index number 5 parallel structures right so uh, parallel structures will be very very useful your writing useful uh memo letters definitely they are important but you will see they have a bigger role to play in longer lengthier documents right so to to clarify what sachin and husni have been saying white space is a very important concept especially in sri lanka people don't know about it they completely ignore it right and they have the misconception that have white space Does not mean that you cut down on the information. If you have to tell your clients, management, customers, your boss four things, you must tell all four things, but using less language, less density, more white space. Right. So I hope everyone is now clear on the five ideas, five concepts, and. um yeah five concepts when it comes to business report writing uh, sorry business correspondence okay so moving on from that one um i want to focus a little bit more on examination it's important that you also find out what happened in the sp right um usually Uh, like in some batches or generally we see these comments from the examiners and they highlight that there are areas that people have not paid enough attention to 
so as i said before we are living in a very advanced world right um so in such a advanced world if we are still talking about writing basic emails letters uh, you know memos it's not good so um i want all of you who are participating today i see 102 people today i'm talking to all of you right please um i'm repeating what i said before please stop multitasking please pay attention to me for only these 2 hours and you will definitely uh, immediately without studying you will get higher marks for your exam at least for letters memos and emails right if you listen to me take these ideas into your head immediately you will see a very okay Because I've said that uh, people don't use the proper steps, uh, as I said before, standard formatting. There are a lot of people amongst you who are very confused about standard formatting. We should not be in that situation because, see, we have advanced so far, right? But there are unfortunately um, a number of students. who are still confused about the standard formatting right so today please listen take notes and do the activities i'm telling you and you will immediately correct this problem right second one is a little hard to correct immediately because it's about your grammar your spelling and using inappropriate words and you know learning how to use appropriate vocabulary professional vocabulary respectful polite language in your business correspondence right so that that will take a little more time next one is also very easy to quickly correct not including all the necessary information so you sometimes go manage your time in the exam you don't do this properly misunderstanding the question the question is asking you to do something and you are writing the letter maybe something that you may have by hearted before and you just repeat it in the exam so don't do these types of mistakes a lot of people have a problem and a confusion about the use of subject line in the memo in the letter sorry um, in the email right so we will clarify those problems as well and the next problem item is the greeting right so memo letter email all three how do you use it right? so we not what to do you have to focus on it such a small thing right but i think some people are not careful so you can't be a good um yeah sachin you have a question you can use your mic if you like and then you can ask or you can chat you send a chat whichever you prefer right so basically i don't want uh, okay uh, i don't want any of you to have these confusions about about basic business correspondence after today's session right so i'm going to ask you some questions at the end and you better give me answers because otherwise you can't leave the session i'm going to keep all of you who can't answer right okay including essential details only because there are a lot of people who include unnecessary information right so this leads to over communication in your answers especially in the exam but i always encourage all of my students not to always be exam focused because after all ca is giving Uh, is that you have a be okay some people are very good in the exams right in the exam they write superb emails but when it comes to their office work they don't apply right so they they just write in a very very careless casual manner i'm saying that because recently i got uh, a letter from a bank right very famous bank and they were pretty um i i i thought like they were very careless with their uh, wording right uh, sometimes it kind of 
the tone of the letter was also not very good right so whose responsibility is it to correct and check the letters that are being sent to the customers the manager right at least the branch manager should have looked at it and you learn how to apply them no don't just learn and do it in the exam only use it in your office work right if you are sending an email to your boss you need to know how to do these things properly politely respectfully right whether you like your boss or not doesn't matter right avoid over communication and ending appropriately so these are examiner's comments you need to remember them and you need to make sure that you correct these mistakes in your personal writing okay um because we it's a shame if we continue to have these uh issues in our basic business correspondence right okay what did i do so far can you all remember what have i done in your mind just think what have i done i have taught you five concepts related to business correspondence and i have also talked to you about the examiner's comments regarding poor performance areas right so what are we going to do now we will try and correct all these mistakes right so very quickly yeah very quickly let me ask you a simple question i want you to use your notebook don't send me the answer but write your thoughts in your notebook okay tell me what are the key differences between letters memos and emails what are the key differences between letters memos and emails at least write down one major difference that affects all three genres right what sort of things affect all three types or genres of writing i'm going to give you one minute write down your answer in your notebook and then i will continue with my talk okay so think about it no googling don't google on think and write down what what sort of factors affect all the
Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear. Thank you very much. Right, so everyone, I'm very sorry. I'm unable to switch on my camera. Um, obviously, I'm in the dark, so you won't be able to see me also. Uh, but we will continue from where we stopped, right? So as I was saying, uh, we need to think of, uh, you need to think of a few uh, areas which affects all three types of business correspondence, right? Memos, letters, and emails. I hope you had enough time to write down your thoughts, right? So let's see. If you don't know these differences, please do take notes um, because I think that I don't think anyone should be there who does not know um, how each of these uh, genres are different from one another, right? Um, very good. Husni has sent in a very good answer. Yeah, excellent. I was just exactly about to talk about it, Husni. So good effort, right? So I, just like that, I want all of you uh, to make sure that you're thinking about what I'm saying because see, all good writers uh, have to be good thinkers. If you are lazy to think and you generally want to just get away from uh, your task, then obviously you're not going to produce quality outputs right as an employee also you might do that so first is whatever we are discussing in the session today please think about it right do you understand these differences and do you know how these differences will affect the way you produce your writing to other people remember the the word business correspondence actually means that um, you are talking with as external people, right? You're not doing this uh, for yourself. You're writing a letter to communicate something with another person, a completely different human being. You're writing a memo to communicate something with a completely different human being. You're writing an email to communicate with a completely different human being. So don't assume that whatever you have to say in the letter will be very quickly understood and should be understood by other people. Okay, so what are these three genres and how are they affected? So letters are, are the most formal genre. Uh, memos are less formal than letters and emails are the least formal. So we know that letters can be uh, are usually addressed to somebody else. Give me a second. So we know that it, it will be addressed to somebody external to you, right? Outside of your organization, memos uh, will be addressed uh, to someone within your organization right? And emails can be used in both ways, external communication as well as internal communication. So what, what purpose you're using these documents really has a big impact on the way you write them, okay? If you're writing a memo that is for internal communication, so your writing style, tone, vocabulary, um, con conventions, all of these will be different when you uh, to compare to writing an email, right? So look at the last one. And that is where most of you are really confused, right? Uh, the last item is about the formatting. So it uh, letters are always concluded with a signature in ink. However, nowadays, since we send them electronically, um, we do include an electronic signature. So please remember for your office work, if you are sending a letter, don't just put your name and then, you know, send it. Make sure at least you include your e-signature and send it. Very 
x-ray using the electronic method, right? Memos, memos do not have a salutation uh, or an ending. That is where most of you are getting it wrong and confusing uh, that with emails, right? So there is no salutation or ending for memos. Don't do that in your exam, right? But you can always use special notations. And then uh, emails, they should be professional. However, they are very informal. Um, but they still require you to have an informal salutation and an informal closing depending on what type of email you are writing. So it can be a formal email, it can be an informal email, but whatever type you need to have a salutation and you need to have a closing. So which document should you not have a salutation and an ending? That is in the memo. Right. So please highlight that in your notes and write it down. OK, so let's uh, very quickly jump into uh, professional letter writing. OK, uh, most of you will know, but then again, uh, yeah, very good. Uh, Shakir will give the correct answer. So memo should not have a salutation or an ending. So very good. Right. So please do not have that confusion when you go to the exam. Don't try to sign the memo, right? Because these are the problems uh, which the examiners have identified. So that's why this session, I hope, is going to be very useful to all of you. Right, you know a lot about professional letters, but let's see, right? Let's talk about letters in more detail. So now when it comes to letters, can you remember we talked about the five concepts earlier, right? One of the first things that I talked about is standard formatting. Can all of you very quickly tell me, now uh, when we see a letter, we recognize a letter immediately, right? As I said before, how do we recognize a letter very quickly? That is through standard formatting. So I want, before I talk to you about it, I want all of you to very quickly tell me some of the standard letter elements. At least two or three. Can you quickly tell me some of the standard, standard letter elements means things that you have to absolutely include in a letter. Elements that you have to absolutely include in a letter. So those are called standard letter elements. I'll give you a few minutes. I want you to tell me a few standard letter elements. Okay, very good. I see a lot of good answers. Let me make the question a little difficult now. Okay, now I'm going to give you a difficult question. Um, tell me, okay, listen carefully. Okay, my difficult question is, tell me which standard letter element you should not use in the final exam paper if you are writing a letter. Let me repeat the question. Which standard element should you not use in your final exam paper when you are writing the letter? Not the signature, no. Which standard element should you not use in the final exam paper when you write the letter answer? Uh, 
uh, definitely not the salutation and the heading. Okay, you are in lot of trouble if you don't write the salutation and the heading in the final exam paper. There will be a lot of marks that you lose. So, salutation heading is absolutely necessary in the final exam paper. You will lose marks. So, what is it? What is the standard letter element that you should not use in the final exam paper? Yeah, yeah, I saw a few of you have given the correct answers. Okay, Shakir. Short form expressions are they standard letter elements? Huh? Short form expressions are they standard letter elements, right? So, do when you say standard letter elements, there can't be any confusions about them. Everybody in the world who, who has had a good education, they know about it, right? So, you can't put your own thing into it, it and say, okay. This is a standard letter element. It's like the letters of the alphabet. Everybody knows, right? You can't add your own letter into it and say, no, this is also part of it, right? Okay. So excellent job, everyone. This is exactly why I want you to pay attention to today's uh, session, right? Make sure that you are not multitasking, cutting vegetables and chopping onions because you are going to miss out on the importance of it right okay very good i see good answers a lot of correct answers but let me show you right okay so these are the standard letter elements now i saw in your answers there are a couple of people who are not aware of the full list some of you know a few items but is it enough to know the few items? Is it enough to know a few items? No, no. If you are a business person, if you are an employee, if you are using business correspondence, then you have to know the full list of standard letter elements. So everyone has a responsibility now to study this list. So what are the standard letter elements, everybody? Date, inside address, right? Uh, I have not added the sender's address. I want you to take it as one item. Okay. So sender's address, inside address, salutation, body, complimentary close, signature, and any notations in the letter. Okay. So please study this list carefully. Hereafter, if somebody asks you, if one of your juniors asks you, you need to know what these elements are, right? Date, inside address, salutation, body, complimentary close, signature and notation. So in the exam, as, as we discussed, I want you to write it in red and underline it, okay? Because this is a huge mistake that all of you spend unnecessary time doing this in the exam. Uh, heading, yes, okay, thanks a lot. Murugesan has given me something that is missing. Yes, title. Actually, it's called title. So please do add title here. Let's see if I can edit. No, I, I, I don't think I can edit it now. So thanks a lot for uh, adding that. Okay. So date, inside address, salutation, title. Oh, no, no, no. Hold on, hold on. Title is not part of this. Let me explain why, because we are talking about letters, okay? So, no, title is not a standard letter element. Uh, I hope Murugesan got my point, right? Okay. So, yeah, Murugesan, no. Title or the heading is not a standard letter element. Because we are talking about letters, so that's why. So I want you to take this list very carefully, remember it carefully, study it carefully. But also I want you to remember in the exam, right? Please do not use the addressers. Do not use the addressers. Uh, if you want, you can have the date, but for the exam, it's not compulsory, okay? So how do you start your letter in the exam? 
in the exam you must start with the salutation salutation body complimentary clothes signature all those items are absolutely necessary in your final exam paper so let me repeat what i've said in the final exam do not start your letter by wasting time on writing the addresser right sender's address receiver's address and the date is not necessary in the exam okay moving on now i murgesan gave a good idea he talked about uh, the title or the subject line right so as i said these are called the additional letter elements what does it mean it means that these items can be used if you prefer if you think there is a purpose for it right what do i mean by standard letter elements everyone whether you think they are needed or not needed our personal opinion doesn't matter because these items have to be there in all letters right so these are compulsory items in every letter that you write that is why we call them standard letter elements so listen carefully as i said in the in the final stage i'm going to ask you some questions so you you need to remember these items okay so listen carefully take notes and try to learn it now don't don't waste another hour or two learning these again and again make sure that you uh, spend these two hours in a very productive manner right and learn it now so that your life will be easier when it comes to exams right okay the second set of items that we have in a letter are called additional letter elements why are they called additional because they are not needed in every letter so uh, a good example is the subject line okay subject line is not compulsory subject line is not compulsory but if you think based on the purpose of your letter right based on the scenario that is given in your exam or in your real life if you think a title or a subject line will help to understand and improve the readability of your letter yes then you can use it okay so subject line is therefore uh, an additional letter element so i'm going to give you a task now and i hope all of you will uh, do this because usually people have a confusion as i said right what are the things that we have talked about everyone and you remember the topics now so far we talked about the five concepts of um, you know letter memo email writing then we talked about the shortcomings in the final exam paper the examiner's comments and then we have just now focus on professional letters and under that i have taught you two important areas standard letter elements and optional or additional letter elements right so remember attention line subject line postscript these are called additional letter elements so i have given you an example here on the slide regarding how to use an attention line right attention line is sometimes uh, if you don't know the name of the receiver you only know his or her job title you can use an attention line just above the inside address right so you can say as i have put here you can say attention marketing manager urban development council whatever whatever right so just above the inside address right you can put the attention line you can say attention marketing manager attention hr manager attention uh, whatever the the designation that you uh, want to write okay then sub subject line so we talked about the subject line this is uh, important however it's not compulsory 
the subject line should always tell the readers what is the main focus of your letter why are you writing this letter what do the examiners want you to do in the exam do they want you to write uh, um, asking for information do they want you to write a letter about um, applying to a place do you do they want you to write a letter um, to go, get quotations for something right so all these have different focuses therefore your subject line has to have that idea in that so how do you put your subject line immediately after the salutation right what is your salutation usually when he said dear whatever that is called the salutation you salute the person before you start your letter that is why it's called a salutation it's like saying hello face to face when we see someone in the morning right what do you do you don't frown and look away you know when you see someone in your office in the morning you say you smile and you say hello right same thing happens in a letter how do we do that in a letter through the salutation so that's why it's called the salutation so know know why these items are there all these items have a logical reason and a good business report uh, sorry a good uh, business correspondence writer will know about these things right so where do you put the salute uh, the subject line everyone after the salutation right if you want you can say subject also and then put the title if not straight away you can just say minutes of the summer meeting right postscript is not used now but there are people who still continue to use it it's a kind of like outdated thing postscript right if you break the word post is a prefix in english so prefix means it has a meaning right post means after after what after the script what is the script the letter so sometimes those days when we did not have computers when we used to write uh, hand write the letters um sometimes you draft a very beautiful letter very careful letter and finally you realize oh my gosh i forgot to mention this right so what can you do you can't do anything you can't erase the whole letter right especially if you have written it using a pen or ink you can't do that so that's why people invented something called this postscript you can you may have seen if you have looked at your emails and letters carefully some people put p.s right p.s and colon means that they are giving you a postscript so postscript is where people may have forgotten something or they may have something secondary to say maybe something that is not directly relevant to the subject of the letter if they say, if they have something additional to say then they can put it in the postscript right so watch out for these when you get a email from someone when you get a letter from someone just look at the letter carefully because uh, if you do this regularly you are bound to pick up uh, certain things in a very easy manner i mean as i said before it's a shame that there are people who don't know how to write a business letter business email in a polite professional manner even in this uh technologically advanced uh, world right we should not be in that situation so learn it properly use it and then you will see how positively people respond to your business correspondence okay let's do this this is your activity i i have like i'm going to give you about 5 minutes to figure this out and uh, let me show you the items okay so these are the items there are 12 items here if you want just quickly you can um take a screenshot so that you can do the activity um vijayalakshmi is asking in which place ps is mentioned so that is, that would be mentioned postscript usually comes after the signature block 
right so you will see now when you write a letter um, hard copy right in a hard copy people finally sign no they sign they put their signatures and then sometimes they mention their uh, position or the designation in the company and after that you will see ps right so usually that is the place a postscript has to be mentioned even in emails i have noted that sometimes you know uh, senior managers who are used to this traditional method they still use it some of our professors still use it in their emails right usually postscript comes after the signature block even in an email um, if it is difficult because sometimes emails of course there you have a automatic signature block it will be difficult uh, so it will be somewhere after the signature your initial signature somehow right okay so there are 12 items i hope you already know this right because basic very basic here is a letter i just want you to very quickly i have done uh, the salutation because a lot of people can't recognize the salutation okay number 5 here i hope you saw this uh, number 5 is salutation so where do the salutation come here right so how do you start your exam answer start with the salutation everyone right so uh, whatever you have on the top the company address inside address date is not necessary start straight away with your salutation and then if you want you can add a title um, and then you need to organize other stuff right so let's let's very quickly identify what these items are and then uh, we will move into the next point so i'll give you about 2 to 3 minutes for you to try and check that you can recognize all these elements standard and optional right both are there um okay that's a good question murugesan is asking if we are issuing a letter in company letter head do we need to put a company seal also not necessary but it depends on on the company practices also because uh, if it is a very important letter to a very important account or a customer then some companies actually to make sure the authentication is there they put their seal right but usual practice is that it is enough because letterhead is also an official recognition that this letter has the authority of your company right so ask your management because i think management managers are the best people who knows about company practices and preferences so find out what your house style is but usual practice is to only uh, issue it in company letter head okay that's another good question from anton and that is exactly my my next uh, discussion point okay let me show you a real uh, because i know that 
there are a lot of people when I do this activity, they still have confusions about uh, the letter. So let me show you a real example of a real professional letter. And then you will see uh, whether it is correct to uh, put the date on the right or the left where these elements have to be organized, right? So let me cancel the share for a moment. And then I'm going to share. Okay, I hope you can see the letter now. Okay, study it carefully everyone. What do you call this? This is called a particular style of letter. What style is the presentation style? You can come and tell me. Miss could you please uh, increase the, uh, like, uh, zoom in because we can't uh, read that properly. I think majority of the students also. Okay, sure. I'll do that, but I don't want you to read the letter. The point here is for you to just see where the elements are put. Now, we talked about uh, standard formatting elements and optional formatting elements. All I want all of you to do is just to locate where these items are, right? I don't want you to read the letter. So just see where is the date put, where is the salutation, where's the signature block, right? How have they organized it? And if you have done it like this, uh, what do you call this? What style is this? Uh, someone has said, Anton has said it's UK format. No, not UK format. We have a professional word for it. What, what style is this? Anyone? Let me try to uh, read this, but bottom line is I don't want you to read this thing. Uh, this is just locate how these items are, right? Ah, very good. So Vijay Lakshmi and uh, Lakshika, Karuna Ratna, everyone knows. Very good. So this is called a full block format, right? So please remember these words because bottom line, if you are corresponding through these genres you must know right if somebody says okay write the english alphabet from the first letter to the last letter you have to write it properly right if somebody tells you okay write the single alphabet from the first to the last you have to do that you can't mix the two and say i am a matonica i am doing no right exactly the same thing applies to uh, professional writing professional means you are respectful you're respectful of the conventions, right? Uh, now, see, in accounting, as far as my knowledge goes, there are things called good practices, right? You have accounting standards. So why do you have accounting standards? What's the purpose? To make your job difficult? No, right? You have accounting standards because it has to be applied consistently everywhere and everyone everywhere in the world will understand what you are writing okay if you if you create a particular type of account everyone understands ah okay this is an income statement everyone will know ah okay this is an audited report right audit report uh, so just like that in business correspondence also you have to adhere by these conventions right so yes uniformity is very important right uniformity is what we are trying to do in business correspondence also right so everywhere in the world if you go please remember this is called the full block style of writing professional letters and it's pretty easy to remember how do you how do you know this is full block the entire thing let me zoom down again right if you look at the full letter, all the elements that we discussed under standard and optional letter elements, everything is plus left. So you can see everything starts on the left margin. So that's that's why I said um, uh, 
um okay i forgot who asked the question uh yeah enter Anton said where to put the date right so the date should also start from the left if you are using full block let me very quickly go to the next one now what is this called everyone full block okay before i move just look at the bottom of the um letter that is also i think important to all of you because you don't know what uh, complementary clause is signature block is and the notations are right so look at the last block um this is important i think so complementary clause is saying sincerely or yours sincerely right you can do either you can say yours sincerely or you can just simply say sincerely and right then you have the signature block your name your designation and if you want your department right then after that you will have the initials or whatever that you want right whatever company uh, initials or anything that you want to put but then you will have attachments or enclosures we call them enclosures if you are sending a letter so say you are attaching um a report to your letter or your cv to the letter those are called enclosures right and this is the exact same place where you will find the ps so after the signature block you might see in this place p.s colon right so that is the postscript and it will give you a message if it says ps ps cannot be blank okay ps and there can't be there can't be a missing item they will have to give you a message once they put ps right no that's a good uh, question tapil it's it's quite impolite to say dear hr department right because why do we call someone dear because it's a human being right so hr department is not alive like if your hr department is alive <laughs> there is a problem right uh, hr department is a inanimate object so with inanimate objects you don't use the title dear so just say uh, dear sir or madam if you are referring to hr department use the attention line say attention hr department right do not say dear hr department it is impolite and quite absurd as well okay yes you can definitely lakshani uh, lakshani you can definitely use faithfully right uh, but again all these have a lot of history behind it right especially in sri lanka and in a lot of other countries where we have been under the british we don't use faithfully because there is a bit of a connection to the colonial past are uh, when we were under the british right we regarded them as our masters etokota thamai oy faithfully kiyana wachane aave api issara liyuma kiyenawa na adhirajyata api liyanne yours uh, faithful servant right ehemai api issara liyum liyuwe because we are respectful towards the monarchy but gradually when things modernized right and people who are well aware of business correspondence uh, correspondence they stayed away from uh, writing and using those words but i'm not saying it's bad or wrong if you if you still prefer you can use it right however know the history behind it a lot of people don't know the history behind it right okay now let's look at it again right uh, so this is the full block letter how do you recognize the full block letter everyone all the standard and optional elements are flushed left okay now i'm moving to show you a semi block letter okay so compare the difference between these two It's the 
thing this is happen no okay this is the correct one right can you compare the two uh, letters now can you tell me what are the differences between the earlier one and this one why do we call this a semi block letter earlier what you saw was full block so it's very important that you recognize the differences in the presentation right and uh, you use it in your office work as well what are the differences that you notice here can you tell me at least one difference that you spot uh hold on i missed the question i think now feel says can we put a salutation as okay that i answered anton says is the signature block is it wrong if we write name with initial in yeah basically we don't do block letters because you know in business correspondence using full block letters means again all capitals right uh, don't use complete capitals because most of you know this it's it sounds like it is equal to shouting in writing if you want to shout at someone okay uh, you raise your voice now when you are speaking you are angry you shout you raise your voice in writing we can't do that so what we do is we use full capital letters so i think it's not really um, very nice if you put all capitals right if you put your name in all capitals it doesn't really look nice no so don't do that right uh, date and complimentary close up yes very good vijay lakshmi uh date yes oh, okay murugesan that's another excellent question uh, some people are using thank you and uh, thanking you at the end of the letter is there any thanking you is grammatically incorrect okay so please don't use thanking you i have i know there are a lot of people who use it but even if 100 people use it it's still wrong is wrong right so don't use thanking you say thank you that's enough because you're trying to end it right thank you is not correct right okay very good most of you have recognized that there are different uh, differences when it comes to um, these two letter types right uh, so you see letter uh, sorry the date has been flushed right okay the the date is moved towards the right hand side okay then can did you notice the complimentary close right the complimentary close has also been moved to the right hand side signature block has also been moved to the right hand side sometimes now this letter does not have a title so some people center the title in semi block okay so these are the key differences between full block and semi block what is a full block everyone using all the standard and optional letter elements flush left fully left right starting everything on your left and semi block is moving date um title complimentary close and signature block towards your right hand side but the rest is the same right so what should you do in the uh, exam what 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 is uh, the better thing to do in the exam yeah okay oh, so, so this is another good question in fully in fully okay it's not fully block form form format it's full block right it's not fully block it's full block format do we use thank you yes it doesn't matter okay full block or semi block refers only to how you present the information right your presentation right whether or not you say thank you or not is content right so you have to understand the difference between these two api liyumak liyana kota karana vitarak neme 
අදහස් පමණක් නෙමෙයි ඒ අදහස් ප්‍රකාශ කරන මේ ප්‍රසන්ටේෂන් ස්ටයිල් එකක් තියෙනවා එතකොට මම මේ කතා කරන්නේ ප්‍රසන්ටේෂන් ස්ටයිල් එක ගැන විතරමයි අපි ලියන්නේ මොනවද කාරණාව මොකද්ද කරුණු මොනවද කියන එක අදාළ නැහැ right so full block or semi block refers to only the presentation of your document where you put these elements right thank you or not saying thank you adding the title not adding the title all this is part of the contents of the letter etukota liyumak liyenakota ehenam api karunu warga dekak gena nitharama hitanno ne vibhage thiyuna monada hitanno ne karunu warga deka ekak liyana karunu monawada what is the purpose are you going to put a title are you going to say thank you are you going to say sincerely are you going to say faithfully all these are questions referring to your content or the meaning of the letter right but are you going to use full block are you going to use semi block these are matters that are connected to the presentation of your document right so i hope everyone is now very clear then balana liyumak una godak aya kochchara apahadili wada indala thiyenne me liyumak liyen eka gena right so always remember in the exam you must concentrate on both of these categories what are the two categories content meaning uh, or the meaning of the letter and the presentations how you are going to present the letter to the examiners are you going to use full block or semi block so my advice is and uh, the current practice is also to use the full block because it's easy right so the reason why we are using full block is because we are using a lot of computers so you know if you have used a computer you know how difficult it is to do the semi block version right you have to push items here drag the items there and do all sorts of adjustment which is going to take a lot of time away from your uh, work right so this is the practical reason right so remember that when you write a letter there's a history behind letter writing in the world so you must know at least a basic idea about why these letters are written in this manner ai me liyum kiyene ma me vidihata ma liyanne ai apita ohe liyuma patang ganna bari ai me salutation ekak ko hama deekata ma arthayak tiyena etukota if you are a good professional you know the meaning and how these things have come about right so when you use full block remember it's easier on the computer you can straight away start right so know the meaning and use it appropriately no uh, that's a good another good question yours truly please remember yours truly is a very unprofessional complimentary close uh, because it's informal right don't say yours truly in a professional business letter if you are writing to a friend of yours or a acquaintance or someone who you know then it's fine but in business letters we do not write yours truly yes definitely rumi is asking a good question can we explain something by using brackets in a letter yes very good right you can always give additional information uh, information that is not directly relevant yes you can definitely add those into your uh, letter right okay let me jump back into my uh, slide right so i hope you can see the slides now right if you can't just let me know okay so i hope all of you are now clear and see like letter writing we have been doing it for centuries but still we have a lot of confusion about it so i hope practically you 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 learned some of the history behind it because it's very unfortunate that people do end up writing letters but they don't know how these letters have come about and why in the world we produce letters in this manner right why do we write letters like that who told us to write letters so you must think and you must 
understand uh, the historical value of letters. As I said before, letters are the most formal type of business correspondence. So you must respect it and you must do business writing and letter writing in a polite, respectful manner to other people, right? Okay, let's very quickly move into the next one. Okay, can all of you remember what we have done? Let me give you a minute to think about it. Okay, we talked about formal letters. We talked about standard letter elements, optional letter elements. Uh, we, we located these elements and we also talked about two areas of letter writing, uh, presentation style and content of the letter, right? So you when you do writing in the exam, I would like you to use the full block method because it's easier to do. And full block means starting all the elements on the left, flushing it onto your left and doing your letter, right? And then I also want you to think about the five concepts and especially the white space factor, right? Don't write entire page. Don't fill your entire page uh, with language, language, language. Make sure you have white space, good paragraph division, good margins, right? And your letter is very professional and all the elements are aligned correctly, okay? So this is the same format, okay? The, don't have a confusion with that. This is the same format that you need to use for all types of letters. Whether you're writing an inquiry letter, complaint, uh, invitation letter, refusal, promotional request letter, whatever type of letter you write, the presentation style should be either full block or semi block. Okay, I hope all of you are clear. So, what are the different types of letters that we use? There are many, many, many types, but I want to focus on five very co common letter types for your exam, right? Your final exam will uh, usually ask you to write one of these types of letters. Right? So you need to know how to organize the content. Now we have talked about the presentation, full block, semi block. That has nothing to do with the content, right? So I hope everyone is clear. So inquiry, complaint, invitation, refusal, promotional and request. So, how do you organize your content? The mamuka the content kela ke with content kela ke ani yam kisi liu makin apik prakasha karna adha hasa adha hasa venas me hai mawasta hai by presentation style leke kamat right? So presentation style should be uh, uh, full block or semi block, but how you organize the letter is different. So let's see. Um, this is how you organize different types of letters, the content side or the meaning of the letter. So if you look at, um, yeah, if you look at um, the letter of invitation, uh, you're going to, uh, first of all, in your first paragraph, you are going to invite the person giving basic information of the event. Then you are going to describe the event. And finally, you should describe why invitees' presence is important for the event. So, for example, you can say, uh, on behalf of the Welfare Society of CA Sri Lanka, we cordially invite you to grace the occasion of uh, whatever event, right? And then you describe what whatever quiz or quiz quiz event or whatever event that you uh, uh, organize, you describe. And then finally say, uh, your presence is highly valuable to all of us uh, because of these, these, these things, right? That's how you finish a letter of invitation. Compare that to a sales letter. You don't do the same thing in a sales letter. What do you do in a sales letter? First of all, you should stay, state why you are writing what you are writing about and you should create a little bit of interest, right? So you can say something like, are you tired of, um, okay, say, <laughs> are you tired of uh, power cuts, right? 
and then you can give a description of the hardships people are going through because of power cards and then you can say we have the perfect solution uh, we have a rechargeable uh, i don't know what do you have rechargeable fan <laughs> in our company and then you in the second paragraph you can start to specify what you offer and the benefits to the audience so our fan can be charged very quickly that we will give you a three years warranty period right so that's how you do the second part and finally you finish the sales letter by um, this is called the call to action right writing something to make the readers act it's not enough if they just read your letter right they have to read the letter and they have to call you and place an order so you have to do uh, you have to get them to do something so uh, you might say something like um, uh, please call us feel free uh, to contact us for a discount uh, which we are offering from uh, only for one month uh, to special customers like you and that's that's call to action right so you can compare and see that each type of letter is organized in a different manner based on the pur purpose of what you are writing so please think about it in, in your exam so finally uh, when you write letter i want you to think about these key points right pay attention to your tone tone in the sense you have to be neutral and professional you have to be polite to people right you can't say you have not uh, sent us uh, uh, the payment for the uh, product you bought right no you can't do that you have to write using polite professional language even if you are at the receiving end of the uh, thing right so um, you have to use the correct tone correct vocabulary professional language have a brief state your purpose introduction all letters the first paragraph you should mention why you are writing right then review the context why are you writing this letter you need to explain and then you give a little bit of the background then if there is a bad news news to be given right say someone has not done payments and therefore uh, this put it first paragraph give it later give some sort of a good positive idea first organize your paragraphs logically keep your paragraphs short so my advice is eight lines is maximum especially for the exam eight is more than enough for one paragraph right and then use headings list and tables where appropriate if you are writing a very professional letter please remember you are allowed to use bullet points right not throughout you have to mix them with the paragraphs right bullet points tables listing um, even graphs or pictures diagrams can be used if it is appropriate right and then have an active conclusion so it's very very important in the letters that you have a very good very interesting conclusion okay right so this brings me to the end of uh, the first point i want you to do something now right so i'm going to give you a letter and very quickly i would like you to read the letter and organize the content in the correct manner once you do that i would like you to write answers to these three questions so can you very quickly take down or take a screenshot of these three questions right you're going to do a little activity you're going to reorder a letter and put it in the correct order once you do that i want you to answer these three questions what is the focus of the topic of the letter explain how the ideas are organized write down a few expressions that have been used to show the displeasure of the sender the uh, of the letter about the situation so this is why i said your language has to be polite even if you are talking about a negative thing 
so you can take an example from the activity right um, you can learn from this example letter how to use polite language okay so very quickly take take a screenshot maybe of the three questions and now i will very quickly because we are running out of time no uh, very quickly we will move to the activity it's already 8 but i know i have a few more a lot more things to do but so um it will take a little more time i hope that is okay with all of you taking a little more time So I'm going to stop, stop the share and I will share the letter now with you. So this, these are the, uh, this is the letter, right? It's a very short letter. I want you to put this into the correct order and tell me uh, which section should uh, be the first item in the letter. What is the second paragraph? What is the last paragraph? Just to order from one to seven, I have labels. So you can use the label numbers and then reorder the letter. Now I think it's a bit clearer. So let me give you like a minute or two. Please read it quickly. And if you have reordered it, uh, you can share your answers in the chat. So everyone, please do the activity quickly because we are running out of time. And uh, but still, I would like you to do this carefully so that you really learn how to organize your content in the letter. Right. So please do it and very quickly send me uh, the corrected order in the uh, chat. Right, good. So we have a few answers. I'll give you a few more seconds to send your ideas, right? Everybody, please do try it. 
logical then you learn how to organize ideas in a logical flow right because remember what we discussed you are sending this to an external person someone who is very different to you so don't expect them to immediately understand what you are saying right if you want people to read and understand what you are writing about in a very quick easy manner then you have to help them how do you help them by organizing your ideas in a logical manner so if you jumble all these sentences together this letter does not make any sense right so just read from 1 to 7 as it is does it make any sense to you no right it doesn't make any sense so please do give it a try because i as i said it's very important that you are hands on and you know how to organize ideas in a letter so let me very quickly show you the answer then you can check uh, if your ideas have been correct okay so this is the final version so you can see the letter is using full block format and uh, how the ideas are organized right so what does the letter say uh, dear mr shafer we have received your letter of complaint i'd like to sincerely apologize for the unfortunate events that occurred during your recent visit to our store we have launched an investigation into the event and we are in the process of retraining the individuals who offended you i would like to thank you for your letter because it is through valued customers that uh, like you that we become aware of these negative situations please give us another opportunity to serve you as a customer i would like to meet you personally and express my apologies in this letter i am attaching a gift card and an incentive to return to our store thank you for being a valued customer of python computers right so this is like a, a very important uh, very sin very polite letter and you will see that the language and the tone is very professional and apologetic right so you need to learn how uh, to write according to the situation as well right so i hope this activity has even though we are running out of time i hope it was very practically useful to see how uh, a jumble letter can be made much much more clearer um, uh, if you put it in the correct uh, logical order right so the three questions that i've asked you is what is the focus the focus of the letter was to apologize so it was a letter of apology and ideas how are the ideas organized look at this right it looks like a very small letter but the letter contains language functions which your examiners are looking for right so the this particular letter the example letter i have shown you is a good sample to show that the person who wrote the letter knows a lot of good english to perform different functions right so in the letter the writer is doing different actions right and he or she is using correct language to perform these functions so what are the functions first of all acknowledging the letter we have received your letter thank you right then apologizing then corrective actions what they have done we have uh, launched an investigation into the event so corrective action appreciating the customer's action i would like to thank you for the letter you sent us requesting to make amends please give us another opportunity to serve you as a customer personalizing i would like to personally 
come and thank you. Right? Compensation. The letter e has a gift card attached. And finally, thanking and concluding is also important. Right? How does it conclude? So, all of these are important if you want to get good marks. And as I said before, marks are not the ultimate goal here. You need to learn how to communicate using professional language in a polite manner. Right? Okay. So, finally, there are three types of letters. Formal, semi-formal, and informal letters. So depending on the language and the situation, you can categorize them as formal, semi-formal, and informal. So the last part that I have said here might be very important to you. Uh, how to open each of these types of letters, right? Formal letters, you can open them by saying, dear sir and madam. But semi-formal, you can use dear, Mr. or Ms. or Mrs. And then you put the final name or the last name. Informal, you use dear plus first name. Right? And how do you end? If it is a formal letter, you can say yours sincerely, yours faithfully. Right? Or just sincerely, faithfully. Semi-formal also, you can say sincerely. But informal, you can say best regards, warm wishes, because it's an informal letter, right? Okay, so this is your homework task. Uh, take a screenshot of this, and I would like you to practice writing different types of letters uh, for different situations. But when you write, think about what we discussed. We discussed about five concepts connected to business letter writing. Okay, we talked about uh, the presentation style, semi formal, uh, sorry, semi block, full block, right? We talked about organization of content uh, and we talked about examiner's comments. So try to make sure that you don't have any major mistake. Uh, that the examiners have commented about, right? Okay, let's jump to emails and also finally the memos. Uh, I will need about 10 more minutes only for this, right? Uh, because we have already done the bulk of discussions, right? We have already done the major part of the discussion. So this part is going to be pretty quick, but you need to listen carefully and think about um what we are discussing right okay so we talked about standard elements and optional elements emails also have standard email elements and optional email elements right so let's look at an example so you have the head here is the standard email element right so the entire first part is let me show you with another example, then it's going to be much clearer to you. Right, I hope all of you can see this now. So this is, um, this is the presentation style of a good professional email. You have a header, right? What do the header have? It has a two line subject line and sometimes an attachment line okay then it starts with a salutation and it has to finish with a complimentary close so you can use something like cordially best wishes best regards these are the complimentary closes so please don't use letter complimentary closes like your sincerely and faithfully in an email right then you have the in the middle you have the message but still the message has to be broken into proper paragraphs, right? So what are the standard email elements and what are the optional email elements? How are they organized? In an email, we have a header. We start the email with a salutation. We have a message and we finish it with a complimentary close. So that is a very important thing that all of you should remember. Right? 
it, it, your emails, if you're writing emails in the exam, you have to write uh, the two line, okay? The byline, sorry, the two line subject line is very important. And you need to have the body, you need to have a proper closing for the email, and you have to have a, a signature block as well. So you need to have a complementary close, and then you need to sign in the letter, in the exam, okay? So in uh, another problem that we see in the exam is abbreviations and emoticons. Right. My advice is in the exam or in your professional emails, please avoid using emoticons and abbreviations. Right. It's not professional. Uh, so there are a lot of do's and don'ts. Right. You do not use abbreviations and emoticons. Don't use capital letters or uh, full capital letters. As I said, it amounts to shouting. Right. Um, make sure that it is polite uh, don't use humor irony uh, make sure that there are no spelling issues like american english british english everything mixed up right so these are some of the do's and the don'ts right so what have we discussed about emails again emails similar to letters they have standard elements optional elements so your task as the email writer is to use these elements appropriately okay so uh, this unfortunately we do not have time to do but i want you to have a look at this and maybe complete it as your homework take a screenshot and um, you see in this email there are a lot of uh, grammar vocabulary and spelling issues i have underlined these issues and I want you to correct them, okay? And also, this is, another, this is a good example for you to understand how to write an email in the exam. So as I have demonstrated here, in the exam, please write your email in using this same format. So you need to include a two line. Your header should have a two line, okay? Who's, who's, uh, who are the receivers? from line who is writing the email and the subject line okay and as you can see after that you can put a complimentary close you can say best regards and you can put your name um, and send it do not put a signature in the email right because sometimes some of the students sign the email you don't do that right don't put a real signature okay mistakes when writing an email unprofessional address bad subject line inappropriate addressing not coming to the point uh, not double checking spelling grammar issues no call to action and answering in the heat of the moment without thinking right and sending emails to everybody right or reply you reply all. So please remember it's also considered an impolite thing if you um, send replies to everybody who is not relevant, right? Okay, there's a homework acti activity. You can take again a screenshot and I will send this through Augusta later on. So all the homework activities I will send you so that you can practice what I have taught you, right? And let's move on. Finally, remember the examiner's comments, uh, especially when you write emails, use the proper format. Don't confuse with the memo format. A lot of people don't know the difference between a memo format and an email format. So I will explain it in two minutes time. Okay, grammar and spelling uh, using inappropriate words, not including all the necessary information and using informal and impolite language. So these are the things that you have to watch out for, right? So we have talked about writing a professional letter. We have talked about writing a professional email. What is the problem with memos? Right? This is the problem with memos because emails can be used 
uh, for business letters and used for memos as well. So people tend to confuse all the three genres together, right? So remember, business letters usually come in a hard copy, but nowadays we send it e as an e electronic copy. Uh, we can use email as a letter and we can use emails as a memo. But for your final exam, there is a very, very clear format that you have to follow, right? So what, what is the comments from the examiner? I'm focusing a lot today on examiner's comment because I want to make today's session very, very useful to all of you because, okay, yeah. Uh, some uh, Lakshika is asking for me to show the standard email elements. So let me quickly go to that slide and I'll come back. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. So these are the standard email elements, right? Header, salutation, message, message complimentary close and signature. Attachments are the optional element in email. Um, presentation slides, Anton, I don't, I normally don't uh, share my slides because a lot of people tend to copy and they tend to take it, uh, take advantage in a very unprofessional manner. So what I can do is I can share the homework and uh, because from the very beginning, I have asked you to take notes. I expect you to, uh, plus you have the recording, right? So you can use, uh, look at the recording and take down anything that is not clear to you, right? Uh, but normally I don't really, um, I don't really share my slides because people tend to copy. Uh, please remember because, uh, you know, there are very unprofessional people. They don't realize uh, that I am spending a lot of my personal time preparing these contents for all of you and making sure it is really relevant to you, right? Okay, let me jump to the memo elements now. Again, everyone, these are very simple now, right? Why is it simple? Because we have already discussed the bulk of the information. Memos, again, have standard elements and optional elements. Acknowledging, okay, Vijayalakshmi is asking, can you please tell us how to acknowledge an email in a simple manner? You can, you can say, uh, I have received your email. Thank you very much for that. Right? I have received your email. Thank you very much. Or you can say, thank you for your prompt email. Uh, you can also say, uh, thank you for uh, taking the trouble to uh, email me, right? Um, that's it. That, those are the simple ways to acknowledge an email. Right? Okay, I hope all of you are clear now. Uh, now, what did we have in emails, everyone? We had a header, right? We had a header. But in memos, what do we have? We have guide words. So this is where most of you uh, in the exam get confused. So let me show you a sample memo so that the complete the confusion is completely uh, removed, right? So after you look at this, it will become very clear to you how to organize a memo, right? So this is the memo format. You have the guide words, everyone. So please do have the guide words in your exam, right? Start to start your memorandum by writing the two line from line, date line, subject. All four items have to be there in your final exam answer, right? Two line, from line, date line, and subject line. What did we have in the email? We had the two line, from line, and the subject line only, right? So understand the difference. And also, at the beginning, I told you, uh, in an email, you have to start with a salutation. But look at this memorandum. Does it have a salutation? It doesn't have, it, it doesn't say dear sir, madam, or dear whatever, right? Don't do that in a memorandum. You do not start with a 
uh, salutation. You don't have a complimentary close in a memorandum. You don't sign the memorandum. You can have special notations, just like in an email or a letter. You can put uh, if there are if there are attachments, it will appear. And if you are copying it to someone, you can mention that also here, right? For the exam, what do you need? For the exam, you have to make sure you use the correct format. So please don't put a salutation. Don't sign your memorandum. Don't have a complimentary close, right? Make sure that you remember the standard elements and Yes, yes. Murugesan says in memo, there can be CC also. Very true. So all that will be indicated under special notation section, right? So if you're sending a CC or carbon copy to someone, you can mention that. But you should remember the overall um, outlook because your examiners are very, very clear, right? Because there are a lot of people who confuse the email standard elements and memo standard elements so i'm going to go back to email see these are the email elements right and then these are the memo elements right so you can have special notations copy carbon copy blind copy attachments uh, enclosures or confidentials, right? So this is a sample. Unfortunately, we will not have enough time, but I will send uh, the questions to you so that you can practice later on. Uh, important points. 100% of readers read the subject line in a memorandum. So please pay a lot of attention in the exam if you are writing an answer to the memo question have a very, very powerful subject line, okay? Respond to the reporter's question. That's a good method you can use for memo, memo writing. Who, what, when, where, how? Answer those questions in your first paragraph. And any additional information you can include in the final paragraph. And you can have, um, you need to have a call to action. You can tell, uh, whoever you're sending the memo to, to do whatever action, right? Or you can thank them for their contribution. So these are the things that you need to do in memo writing. Bottom line, a memo is very clearly different to an email. Did all of you understand that? Are there any confusions, anything that I need to clarify? Yeah, email do's and don'ts. I will go back to it. You can. Okay, these are the do's and don'ts of the emails. Right. So I hope you have understood and you have clarified some of the problems in your writing. And as I said, now we live in a world where we have a lot of technology. And if we are still struggling to write a good email, clear email, professional email, I think that's a shame. Right. So don't don't may don't uh, fall into that level or that trap. Make sure you have a very clear knowledge of what is a memo, what is an email, what is a letter, and the five concepts that we talked about, right? What are the five concepts that we talked about, right? So I will send you the homework task and some of the tasks that I was planning to do, but unfortunately, I've already taken 20 minutes, even though I said 10, 10 I'm very sorry. But I hope it was worth your time. Uh, I did have an exit ticket, a question, set of questions to ask you. So try to see if you can answer these questions. And if there is anyone who is kind of like getting late, you all are free to leave. But others, try to, uh, try to send me answers to at least these four questions. I do have a few more, but at least four, first four questions. 
try to send me some answers, then you can leave. <laughs> Uh, okay, that's again a good uh, question from Shanti. Shanti says, when sending an email, is that a professional thing to highlight or bold some part? Of yes, um, you can bold. Um, uh, yes, you can bold, you can highlight, you can, um, but don't use colors, right? Because in a, in a letter, it's not really good, but yes. Bold and underlining is quite fine. It's very, it's not unprofessional. It's but don't do it too much. Yeah, absolutely necessary ones. Okay, very good. I'm seeing some answers. At least to these four questions, I want all of you who are remaining in the session to send me answers so that I know that you all have learned something from my session and that this has given you some practical ideas and clarified some of the confusions that you have about basic business correspondence. So um, everyone, I would also like to thank all of you for remaining. I'm sorry, I've taken a few more minutes, right? And so the bottom line is, uh, it is very easy to do business writing but you have to understand some of the basic communication concepts. If you are in a hurry and you are only thinking about your technical knowledge, you are bound to write things in a very, very confusing manner. Okay. So make sure that all of you listen to uh, my lecture again and try to look at the concepts that we have done and do a lot of writing and practicing because examiners are very clear that all of you need more practice, more and more practice uh, in writing good professional emails because unfortunately about 60% of people uh, don't know how to be polite in a professional email they don't know about standard elements optional elements so obviously you're going to um, it's going to cost a lot of money you know if you send the wrong message to wrong people and if you are impolite to people that's going to cost your organization your company yourself a lot of money so think about it we don't want to waste money especially uh, under the current situation, right? So thank you very much for your participation. And I hope today was um, good for you. And this was a good, I mean, productive time that you spent with me. And I did plan to have some more uh, activities and discussions with you, uh, but unfortunately time is a very big barrier. Uh, okay, so what are your final, um, final um, thoughts? Uh, was it was it clear? Are there any confusions? Do you want me to add any more clarifications? Um, yeah, Shanti asked how to send a reminder mail in a polite manner. That's a very simple way. You can just say a gentle reminder on and you put your issue, right? A gentle reminder on whatever it is, right? So everyone, thank you very much again. And uh, please do tell me your thoughts and your feedback. Was today's session useful to you? Was it clear to you? Um, are, are you benefiting from it? Okay, did you listen to it from the beginning, right? All these are very important. And also I think, again, I would like to stress on the politeness factor, right? Uh, when you participate online, it's your duty also. Uh, to actively be there, to listen to it fully, to participate, ask questions, and to give feedback. Don't leave the session without, you know, at least with, if you can't today, at least with the office, you share the feedback because that really helps, right? So I wish all of you all the very best. And I do have another session, I think, next week. So um, I'm expecting most of you uh, for that session as well. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful night, a wonderful week ahead, and uh, stay safe. Uh, 
uh, and practice hard. Okay, thank you very much. Good night, everyone.